Boker Tov, everyone, and welcome to our latest session of Taste of Torah. Our Parsha for this week is Vayishlach, which it continues the story of our ancestor Jacob. If you recall last week, he was forced to flee from his home and his community because of his manipulative ways with his brother had finally culminated in his brother threatening violence. And he sought refuge with distant relatives living in the area of Haram. Thus he joins his uh, really great uncle Laban and he spends 20 years there. And in the course of that time, he falls in love he gets manipulated into a marriage he didn't want. Uh, he does get to marry the love of his life. Uh, he also acquires uh, a great fortune for himself, as well as enhancing the fortune of his great uncle, who doesn't necessarily appreciate his entrepreneurial spirit. So now 20 years have passed. And now all the conflicts in Jacob's life are coming together. He has exploited and manipulated a number of different people. He's uh, manipulated his brother. He's manipulated his father-in-law. He's not been the kindest person to his first wife, Leah, who he doesn't really love, even though she has given him the majority of his children. So it, it can't have been that estranged. But in any case, uh, now he wants to return. Now he wants to, uh, probably wants to reclaim his birthright, but he also needs to resolve many of these conflicts. And that sets up our story uh, for today. So um, pivoting at the middle of all of this is the need for Jacob to become somebody different, to evolve, to improve. And uh, what we initially see is that what Jacob does is he uh, holds by his old ways. He sneaks away from Laban's encampment with all of his possessions, with all of his family, without a word. Perhaps he feels like uh, Laban will not allow him to leave voluntarily. But in any case, he makes a getaway only to have Laban pursue him. And Laban, in a rather surprisingly heartfelt moment, not only complains about that he feels like Jacob has somehow cheated him, but also that he's taking away his daughters and his grandchildren. Uh, and so you get a sense that there is uh, an emotional underpinning to someone that Jacob has treated like a villain in his life. And so Jacob attempts to make some reconciliation with him. They come to an understanding and they part ways, if not reconciled, uh, at least resolved not to be in conflict from this time forward. But now he has to face an even bigger challenge, which is Esau, all right? And um, this is the moment where we find ourselves alone. We're facing a situation where we're cut off from community that we appreciate and love. Jacob has cut himself off from these communities over time. And now it's time for him to resolve what he's going to do. Uh, and he brings a number of skill sets to this. He is um, motivated with multi-layered, complicated motives. He's probably one of the most interesting realized personalities in our Torah. Uh, he, we meet him as a fighter. We meet him as a skeptic. We meet him as a manipulator. And as part of his manipulation and as part of his uh, traditional strategy for dealing with things, he decides he's going to bribe his brother. And so what we have is an extended series of passages where we see that Jacob takes uh, portions of his vast holdings, uh, sheep and cattle, and uh, send them ahead uh, to greet his brother 
who he's heard is coming to meet him with a sizable force and present them as gifts. So in a sense, maybe he's trying to uh, compensate Esau for the loss of his birthright. Uh, he's trying to make some kind of recompense. Uh, he's also trying to stave off trouble. And then he even goes so far as to divide his small camp into two different camps to cross the rivers into the land of Israel uh, by separate paths in order that should Esau come upon one and pillage it and kill the people there, at least some of them will be survivors. He, however, ends up alone at the edge of the river. Everyone has either gone ahead or been left behind. And now he has to confront his isolation. And in his isolation, something extraordinary happens. A man appears and starts to wrestle with him. It's such an interesting moment. We have no idea who this man is. He appears in the darkness. Uh, there is no effort by the Torah itself to explain who this wrestler is. But Jacob, the fighter, wrestles with him all night long. And the two of them struggle. And then in the morning, this wrestler, unidentified, announces that he has to go because the sun is rising, which is very peculiar. Uh, and But uh, Jacob then says something extraordinary. He doesn't say, well, then say uncle. He doesn't say, I beat you. He says, bless me. Bless me. Uh, clearly, Jacob believes that this uh, person he's facing uh, is some kind of agent of the divine. And indeed, many Jewish commentators believe that it is an angel. Some of them subdivide this angel into one of two categories, right? Uh, one interpretation of the angel is that this is Esau's protective angel who's come to wrestle with him. So Jacob uh, confronts his anger and hostility and shame and guilt uh, by wrestling Jacob, by wrestling Esau's angel. Another theory is that it's Jacob's own protective angel. So in a sense, Jacob is wrestling with himself. He's wrestling with everything he's done. He's wrestling with who he is and who he wants to be. And so uh, the struggle draws to a close. Um, the entity, whatever it is, whether it's his own conscience or whatever, does indeed bless him and strikes him in the thigh, giving him a crippling disability. He suddenly can no longer walk easily. He walks with a limp. What an interesting set of ideas presented to us in the story of a wrestling match by the side of a river. Uh, we can go archly psychological with this, uh, but perhaps what I would say is to think about this in our own circumstances. Uh, we find ourselves more alone than we have in the past. Uh, many of us are extremely successful people, just like Jacob, but maybe we should ask, what has it cost us? What have we lost in order to gain all the things we have? And maybe what that requires is for us to confront the conflicts in our life, just as Jacob has, and to wrestle with them. Now, confronting something that you don't want to confront is never pleasant. And in fact, it can be traumatic. And apparently it's traumatic for our ancestor Jacob. He does not come unscathed out of this process. And so it maybe it's warning us that it's unrealistic to think that we would come unscathed out of such acute self-examination. But as by way of comfort, we are told at the end of this episode that having blessed Jacob, the creature says to him, no longer will your name be Jacob. From now on, it will be Israel. Israel comes from a couple of different possible roots. It could be Yashar El, which means the upright one of God. 
Uh, it could be Sar El, which means a prince or officer of God. But the specific interpretation given to this is, I think, the most profound. And that is Yisrael means the one who wrestles with God and man and succeeds. So the reward of our efforts to understand ourselves is that having wrestled honestly with uh, the greatest difficulties of our lives, the complexities of our lives, the mistakes of our lives, uh, we are elevated like our ancestor to a higher plane. It is, I think, a remarkable name given to Jacob, Israel, uh, the God wrestler. And it's a name that we, I think rightly over the centuries have earned uh, and used for our own people and our own religion and our own nation. Uh, we are the people from the land of Israel. Uh, we are the people Israel. And now there is a state of Israel. In each case, it required profound wrestling to make it through the centuries and to continue on. We have not come out of it unscathed. Uh, we have been wounded again and again. Sometimes it seems mortally, but always we have risen up. We have crossed whatever barrier was before us and we have gone on to make a better life for ourselves. And I think, contributed to a better world. So that's our Torah portion this week. I hope that your wrestling is not terribly painful, but I hope it also serves uh, you at this time when we have so much time on our hands to uh, maybe make some significant improvements that we've been putting off up until this time. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and we'll talk again next week.